A national ranking of state governors on their records by American City Business Journals gave Susana Martinez low marks for private sector job creation. It may or, not be, may or may not be fair to place so much of the blame on the state's top executive for New Mexico's anemic e economic recovery. We'll hash that out here in a second. But it begs the question of whether there is a comprehensive plan in place to boost job growth. Laura, Albuquerque Business First, which is part of the Business Journal's uh, sweep of newspapers, also reported that the unemployment rate for the state's four major metro areas increased from an April to May on a year-to-year -year basis over New Mexico added jobs, but Albuquerque was recently ranked 96 out of 100, 100 being very bad, on our, our, our job growth at this point, meaning the rest of the country is somewhat recovering. We're at a point of stasis and no one's really quite sure why. And so going back to the governor in, in her office, what is the deal here? Do we, does she need to lay a number down at some point saying, look, here's the three issue areas we think we have the best choice to get jobs going here. We're going to have X amount of jobs by X year going. Because as we hear it, it's all about the tax plan that came out of the last uh, legislative sessions that's going to turn this thing around. Does she need to lay a number down here at this point? Are we at that point? Well, I think there's, I mean, it's, it's always helpful to have a number in mind. The problem mm -hmm. is that it, you know, it, it forces you obviously to be committed to a particular That's right. amount, That's a particular right. timeline, mm -hmm. um, which some people will see as, as a benefit. I mean, mm -hmm. we need to see some kind of a improvement. But, um, you know, we are a, a very, we're a state that is, does not have a very elastic economy in general. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when other places were doing really well, New Mexico was about the same, was right. flat. That's right. When, you know, now that other places are starting to recover, we're, we're still kind of relatively flat. Sure. Um, the recession didn't hit here as quickly as it did in other places. Mm -hmm. We just don't fluctuate as much. Mm -hmm. So our recovery will be slow. Um, and we also have a lot of public jobs, um, both at the state and at the federal level. Um, so there's a lot I think that the governor could do, but I think that you know one thing to remember about this particular report is that it does only look at private sector. Right. It's not taking into consideration the fact that you know even though they are public jobs, they're contributing to the economy, mm -hmm. and it's part of the discretionary spending of the state. Mm -hmm. It helps the economy improve overall, and there's a lot that the gov governor could do in that area as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting, Rob. Is it fair? I got to ask that question I, I used in the setup. Is it fair to lay the current situation squarely on the governor at this point? Has she had enough time in office to take ownership of all of it? Or well, is there something else going she's on here? One of, uh, she represents one of three branches of government. Mm -hmm. And the other two, if you're going to be casting political stones, you can, you know, ed, uh, sure. you, you, the yeah, other I two. The judiciary yeah, can create jobs. That's true. But the legislature is still controlled by, <laughs> by, by, by the... Uh, it could by, be a jobs uh, program of a sort, you know, right, 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 for those that are in it. Employment. Right, exactly. Right. 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 But I, I think that the governors uh, of any state are like yeah. quarterbacks in the NFL. They get too much credit when things go right and right. too much blame when things go wrong. Right. But on a, on a more macro level, I'm worried about this state. Okay. I really am uh, because it sort of goes back to the previous segment we were talking about education. Mm -hmm. Even if we waved a magic wand and had more industries, more diverse industries, high paying jobs, I'm worried about the number of people who are in our state who are qualified to take those high go. paying jobs. That's right. We've got an, an, an alarming number of kids who cannot read proficiently at the end of the third grade. We have an alarming number of high school students who don't finish high school. The kids who do go to college have an alarming, alarmingly high number who need remedial right. instruction in college. Yeah. I mean, it's all part of this larger thing that mm -hmm that I think is very sobering. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. You know, Diane, Senator, it is, again, I have to say, can any one governor be that person, be that quarterback, or, or, or is the better way to go to be that quarterback and bring a lot of people together and say, look, what's the plan here? What do we need to do? You're the people I've hired to do this. I have not heard anything from you in three years. What's going, where do we need to go here? What's the direction? I I think, uh, well, I think that uh, Rod hit it on the head here, mm -hmm. is the three branches of government excluding the judiciary, because the if you look in terms of, and I particularly took note of the fact that uh, uh, Governor uh, Perry from Texas was oh, yeah. one of the highest ranking states. Yep. If you look at it, New Mexico has m some commonalities with Texas, particularly mm -hmm. oil and gas. Mm -hmm. They ha have got a boom going. In New Mexico, we don't. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that can be credited to over-regulation or continuously changing regulation mm -hmm. of the industry. The second thing is our education issue. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. companies are not going to come here. Young people are not going to stay here. We, we work a lot trying to get young people to stay in New Mexico to be physicians sure. here. 
they can go someplace else and it's a major different world. Mm -hmm. So our education system is part of the drawback. Let me, let me ask you a question. In, in a field that you work in, in the uh -huh. health business, we talked about this a few weeks ago, uh, a part and parcel of the Affordable Care Act mm -hmm. is it's in essence a jobs program. You can get people out in the street doing assessments, door to door, mm -hmm. house to house, figuring out how families live, the issues that impact their health. And hiring is actually the best in that sector in our whole state right now, Absolutely. in the healthcare. Mm -hmm. right. I have not heard anything from our governor or our legislature saying this is the way we could go here. There's an interesting opportunity using health care to be a jobs program here. Are we missing something here in your view? I, yeah, well, from my perspective, yes. The okay. one area that we're not addressing either at the state or the federal level, level through the ACA is providers. Gotcha. We don't have enough providers. We can't get enough funding to get nurses through the program at UNM. Right. We need more nurses. We need more providers, mm -hmm. healthcare providers of every kind. Mm -hmm. One in four residents stay in New Mexico after they go through our residency program. We've got wow. to find ways. One in four stays. One in four stays. Wow. The other three leave the state huh. after they've been here. I had no idea. And yes, so and, and we put, we're putting all these people on insurance, and that's wonderful, right. but who's going to give them care? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I just want to wait. Please. One other quick point mm -hmm. about the difference in Texas and in New Mexico. As Texas is a right to work state, and they just did major tort reform. Mm -hmm. These are all, and I'm not saying any of them, you knew I was going <laughs> to say that, John. None of them <laughs> is a single silver bullet. Sure. But it's a message that's being sent, and I know we overuse this, sure. but. Texas is open for business, folks, and every time the governor Martinez tries to be, right. the legislature goes, oh, no, not so much. John, the last minute goes to you. <laughs> you have a lot to work with here. It's all right. <laughs> First of all, Texas Please. and North Dakota are at the top of the list because they're having a huge boom. Southeastern New Mexico energy is boom. Right. energy boom mm -hmm. with uh, new oil fines. Southeastern New Mexico is the same. Mm -hmm. But if Governor Martinez had been able to come close to matching the, the job growth rate, we would have 15,300 more jobs. Let's look at the policies of the, that's what the report said, right. 15,300 more jobs that if we just match the national average of job growth. Mm -hmm. And instead we're at the bottom of the list, once again, another list mm -hmm. that we've moved to the bottom of during the Martinez administration. I think she does have responsibility as a quarterback for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What has she done? The only thing she has presented to the legislature has passed basically a tax cut for out-of-state corporations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and another gross receipts tax cut that is going to really hurt municipalities. Right. In addition, she vetoed film credits, which is a job creator, mm -hmm. and she's proposed no new building programs as Governor Richardson did in refurbishing our highways and bridges. And so bottom line, she could do a ton more than mm -hmm. she's doing, mm -hmm. and the results are the result of not really doing anything except cutting out-of-state corporate tax. We're going to leave it right there. Sorry, Diane, so much to talk about.